Everyone, this is three questions with Mark White. All right, man. So I've been like just trying to get Mark on the podcast forever. I've been traveling. Uh, we have a very good mutual friend, Dwight Carter, who who literally I actually he speaks the world of you. He actually wrote about. Do you know this? He wrote about you because of a teacher. Did you know this? Yeah, yeah. It's he nice. wrote about I, your impact. So that's a pretty I like you know, I, like I want I want someone to write about me in a book, <laughs> right? Like yeah, it's different I, when someone's complimenting you on a blog they can delete, but you know, like in a book, that's like that's that's kind of that's like a that's like a tablet in the olden days, right? So that's pretty it's, big. It's, it's kind of scary, you know. I gotta live up to that, you know. Uh, that yeah, I think the world of Dwight, um, outstanding person, outstanding leader. I'm honored to be here with you today, George. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I, I and it's been great. I love one thing I always do is that we always talk to the guests before uh, for a little bit, and it's just been awesome to get to know you. So uh, for those of you who don't know Mark, he's a consultant currently. He was a superintendent. He's on basically everything in education, and so we're going to talk more about his books. Uh, he actually wrote one with uh, Dwight called Leading Schools in Disruptive Times. And he also has another book called Five Gen Leadership. And we'll talk more about that uh, in the other podcast. So make sure you check that out. But uh, Mark, when you actually think about your, you know, your career and you think about all the teachers that have inspired you, like who is a teacher that, you know, sticks out to you, whether it was a student, a colleague that really inspired you and why? You know, I have to go back to uh, a high school English teacher. And uh, I later became a high school English teacher, uh, teaching writing, and now that I write, uh, and that would be Miss Nancy Cooper, uh, taught me in sophomore English in Texas City High School in Texas City, Texas. And the reason she stands out is because she's a very kind person, very patient, and she taught me the structure of writing. She taught me how to outline, she taught me how to write, she taught me how to bring my ideas together in a way that makes sense. And it, I still think about her as I'm out, as I'm outlining, as I'm preparing my outlines for my books that I write today. That you know, and that's actually I wonder if that's like when English teachers, you know, find out that their students wrote a book, you know, and like multiple books, like how excited they are. Fun fact: I actually uh, have never heard of Texas City until Texas City booked me to speak at their opening day really event this this summer. So shout out to. Not only Nats Cooper, but Texas City. <laughs> That's actually, yeah, I'm going to be there this summer. So wow, well, be sure well, to tell them. I said thank you. They're, yeah, good people. That's where I grew up. I, I'm going to it. That's like now I'm going to make sure I start with that. So is that, that's where you went to school too, hey? Yep. Yeah. Uh, my mom was a school secretary. My father worked in the Monsanto chemical plant. That's amazing. So like not only like Texas people love being in Texas, but Texas City loves it so much that the name is <laughs> Texas. <laughs> Have, yeah, they, they, didn't real, they didn't get real creative with the name there now, did they? Uh, I, love, uh, I, I actually, when I got the message, I'm like, no, there's not a Texas city in Texas, is there? And then, yes, there is. There it is. Okay, I love it. Okay, so I know that you you have inspired administrators. Dwight talks about you all the time, uh, about your impact on him. But when you actually think about some of the administrators you work with, who's someone who really inspired you and why? Oh, um easy. The one that inspired me was the principal that hired me as an English teacher, made me an assistant principal, a department chair before that. Mm -hmm. And that's Charles Rouse, Charlie Rouse in Leander, Texas. Uh, Leander is a suburb of Austin. When I got there, there were 1,100 students in the high school. Now they have, I don't know how many large high schools. It's a huge suburb now. Uh, but Charlie was a very good person, a very progressive educator. And he taught me it's okay to take chances. Yeah. And as a teacher, he, you know, he he was saying, Mark, you're a teacher. Just, just, just go for it. Make sure if you try something new, just let me know what you're doing. And <laughs> if it worked, fine. If not, at least I know why you tried it, okay? And I, tell, I would tell my teachers that as a principal. And that mm -hmm. would make all the difference in the world for them know that I have their back and trying something new to support what you're, support what you're doing. Let's see how it goes. I said, if you don't try, you don't grow. So you've yeah. got to grow. Okay, so weirdly enough, I've been to Leander too. I know all these places, right? I actually know the superintendent very well. So I got to give a little shout out to Charlie Rouse and, Le and Leander ISD, right? But actually, yeah, it's pretty, that's pretty crazy, like the connections we have. I, I love that you said that because um, I, I actually wrote about this in Innovator's Mindset. So a lot of times, you know, when 
administrators say no to stuff, they're not just saying no and like discouraging people taking risks, discouraging people trying something new. They don't just discourage the person who asked. They discourage all the people who saw the person ask and get shut down, right? And I think that's a really important aspect is that you see that culture being built around that too is where that is encouraged. And you you said it, and I've, I've said this so many times, and I just so appreciate you you just kind of like you know really bringing this home that like you you can push people all you want but they have to know you have their back right and i think that's you know you you brought that very clearly so i love it i love all the connections that i didn't know i didn't know like i actually am surprised that i know all these little places in texas that you're wow. mentioning right you you know you wow, yeah you know texas right so uh, i do i do and, i love it and, and you know and speaking of leander uh Mr. Rouse, Charlie Rouse is so popular. There's now now a Rouse High School there. Get out and, of here, seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, and so Charlie's still around, still going strong, uh, has a legion of fans, and uh, Charlie led with his heart. Uh, he put in the miles every day, walking through the hallways. I got that from him, how you treat people, right. uh, thinking ahead. Uh, yeah, I just learned so much from him. I, you know, I, I think a lot of administrators, and I'm one of those, think back to that key administrator and almost – Every day as an administrator, I would think, what would Charlie Rouse do in this situation? Wow. And, you, got little, you got a little bracelet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, what I know. would Charlie Rouse do? Know. You know, actually, it's kind of funny because my goal at the beginning of this podcast was get someone to write something about me in a book. But now that, you know, I crossed it out, I'm like, name a school after me. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, that's way better than getting, you know? Like there's yeah. nothing, that's it there. So I, I love that. So very, that's very, very cool. So last question, I know you had incredible experiences. Uh, you've inspired many people in your work, but when you think about, you know, obviously we all grow in the profession. If you can go back and talk to yourself as a first year teacher, what advice would you give to yourself? Have fun, have fun. It's about helping the kids. It's not so much about the rules. It's not so much about the curriculum. It's not so much about the testing. Have fun with the kids, help them grow, and everything else will take care of itself. Right. And that, you know, and that, I think that if you are in the profession and, you know, think, I just love being around students and just the enthusiasm they brought. Like, I remember thinking when I, when I first started elementary, like, I want to be an elementary teacher. And I was like, there's no way I'll teach high school. Right. And then I got a high school job. I was like, oh, these, these are actually pretty awesome students. Right. And, and then, and then I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. Then I went to elementary and I loved it. I said, but there's no way I'm teaching middle school. And then I became a middle <laughs> school assistant principal. I'm like, oh, these, these are pretty awesome. Right. They all have their different unique, uh, you know, experiences that they, they bring along with them. And I think, you know, if you, you really love working with students, you know, and you appreciate that and, you know, you have an administrator that supports that too. Uh, there's no better job to do. So Mark, it is awesome getting to know you. I love, uh, the, I, I feel like I need to get onto some like Texas trivia show. <laughs> I'll do on that, but I, I'm so glad to, I'm so glad that we have more time together and that we'll talk a little bit more. And yeah, I look forward to learning more about you and thanks everyone for taking the time to listen. 